Tonight, NDC lays out what it calls the true state of the nation, attacking the government's record on corruption and extending hand of partnership with religious and civil society groups to offer credible alternative to save the economy. President Akufuado's silence on corruption in his infamous address was very loud. It was as loud as his guilt. One thing which will tarry for ages to come is how the COVID-19 pandemic became a corruption bonanza. We'll tell you why the NDC is choosing to stand with the diplomatic community in Ghana following the German ambassador's criticism of the government. Let me urge Ghanaians and the diplomatic community not to be intimidated by the president's unprecedented attack so is always brought to you by Vodafone. It was billed as the true state of the nation address. And the chairman of the NDC, John Singh Asir in Kitia, wasted no time tearing into the president's constitutionally mandated recent state of the nation address. Delivering his address a couple of hours ago the, at the University of Professional Studies, the NDC national chairman questioned the president's silence on corruption when he briefed parliament in that address. President Akufuado's silence on corruption in his infamous address was very loud. It was as loud as his guilt. Evidently, corruption has defeated his family and friends' government. My brothers and sisters, President Akufuado's misguided declaration that nothing dishonorable was done with the COVID funds adds to the litany of failed attempts to conceal the rot that has left many scandalized. How does President Akufuado reasonably expect Ghanaians to accept as honorable the Auditor General's finding that COVID-19 related payments totaling more than 543 million Ghana cities were made to various service providers outside of the Ghana Integrated Financial Management Information System in clear violation of Regulation 61 of the Public Financial Management Regulation 2019, LI 2378. Mr. President, I put it to you that there is everything dishonorable with the finding by the Auditor General that a company known as Modern Security Printers Limited which was awarded a contract to conduct public education on COVID-19 safety protocols for students at an outrageous cost of 1.5 million Ghana cities has been paid in full for no work done. Brothers and sisters, despite the desperate attempt by the chief corruption clearing agent to sweep these serious crimes under the carpet, one thing which will tarry for ages to come is how the COVID-19 pandemic became a corruption bonanza and a milking cow for President Akufuado and his officials to cream state resources in the most obscene manner. Instead of the President sacking the serially incompetent Minister for Health, Kwakwa Jumaimenu, he decided to confer national honors on the minister's corruption and included even more corrupt appointees and companies to desecrate the revered national award ceremony. Well, we've been interrogating a few of the issues that the uh, party uh, laid out today as part of its uh, true state of the nation address delivered by the chairman. One of the key things that the uh, NDC sought to challenge was the president's claim that the current economic crisis was down to the COVID crisis and also Ukraine. There is no gain saying the fact that the coronavirus pandemic affected all countries in the world including our next-door neighbors, Benin, Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, and Nigeria. Whereas these countries manage their resources prudently, thereby recording deficits below 8% and debt-to-GDP ratios of below 65%, 
The Akufuado Baumia government borrowed excessively and spent recklessly for election purposes, thereby recording a disastrous deficit of 15.7% and a debt to GDP ratio of about 80% in 2020. It is instructive to note that in the year 2020, when COVID was at its peak, all our neighbors recorded a budget deficit of less than 8%. Burkina Faso recorded a deficit of 5.7%. Cote d'Ivoire recorded a deficit of 5.6%. Nigeria recorded a deficit of 5.8%. And Senegal recorded a deficit of 6.4%. But Ghana alone recorded a deficit of 15.7% because of the reckless election-driven expenses and wastage the Akufuado Baumia MPP government engaged in. My brothers and sisters, did COVID-19 affect Ghana any more than it did to our neighbors? How come none of these countries are recording inflation rates of over 50% like Ghana? How come none of these has defaulted on their debt repayment? To paraphrase Dr. Baumia, how did COVID-19 jump from Niger jump over Nigeria, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, and other neighbors of ours to attack and destroy only Ghana's economy? Let's bring in uh, my parliamentary correspondent, Kweku Asante, who sat through this address by the NDC. He joins us on the line, Ryan Akweku. Uh, the party has also been challenging several claims by the government on a host of issues from the road to the National Cathedral. Hello, Kweku. Okay, we seem to have lost Kweku on the telephone line. We'll get him back. Uh, he sat through that and a few things. Um, that would will interrogate. Plus, also, we would also uh, look at some of the key issues that the NDC had said. You remember that diplomatic row that ensued, erupted, um, the last time the German ambassador had spoken and criticized the government when it came to the uh, subject of the size of the government? Well, the NDC took a side today. We'll tell you which side that was. And Kweku is back on the line. Kweku, uh, you were detailing for me, uh, if you may, what the issues were when it came to descriptions that the Assyrian kids had deployed to describe some of the claims made by the president and his government over the last few years as a scam. Indeed, Evans, the party lists an exhaustive and elaborate list of issues that have come up under this government. They talk about the National Cathedral. They talk about a host of other serious governmental policies that government has decided to roll out for which it thought will turn the things around in the country and better the lot of the ordinary Ghanaians. And the Sierra Leone sort of went through all of them and received a chorus from the onlookers and the audience, who all of them chanted as scam any of the items that he listed. Let's take a listen. Ghanaians have come to realize that the claim by the president that he knew how to revive a dead economy was a scam. Quote: We are a proud nation. We are not going to IMF. Was a scam. There will be no haircuts. The price to build 88 district hospitals within a year was a scam. Agenda 111 project was a scam. The promise to abolish road tolls was a scam. The promise to convert toll booths into modern, ultra modern public toilets on our highways was a scam. The claim that there was a global shortage of childhood vaccines was a scam. No state funds will finance the National Cathedral was a scam. There you have it, uh, the uh, National Chairman of the NDC there. Uh, and, and by the way, Kweku, uh, talk to me also about this diplomatic row that we know was started when uh, the German ambassador criticized the government based on its size at a time when government was asking the European Union to help it not only forgive part of its debt, but also help it negotiate with China. The NDC took a stand today. Uh, during the President's State of the Nation address, he actually um, touted this government's free speech credentials. 
that and which is said that there were diplomatic missions, the ambassadors and high commissioners in Ghana who meddled in local affairs and were so free to do so that others will not be able to do so. And clearly he was referring to that interview the German ambassador granted us. The NDC have been taking a swipe at the president saying that the diplomatic community should not mind the president when he, when he makes such comments and that indeed they may be able to comment on such national issues as they deem fit every now and then. It also reveals the weakened and depraved state of our nation. A nation where those who scrutinize government dubious expenditures are chased out of office as auditor generals. A nation where journalists who unearth corruption are harassed, intimidated, and sometimes murdered. A nation where members of parliament who diligently carry out their constitutional mandate of oversight and expose crimes are persecuted. And a nation where those who fight corruption are fought back and are even described as terrorists by the courts. The announced on this note, let me urge Ghanaians and the diplomatic community not to be intimidated by the president's unprecedented attack on the German ambassador during his, state, his message on the state of the nation in parliament. We urge all true Democrats to join hands with the National Democratic Congress to resist the suppression of free speech by the Akufuado Baumia MPP government. Did they, did they sum up what then they believe the actual, and this is their own description here, true state of the nation is? Indeed, Evans, according to the national chairman of the NDC, it appeared that President Akufuado did not live in reality. He was living in his own bubble when he presented the state of the nation. They sort of painted a very gloomy picture as to what the true state of the nation address, state of the nation is, starting from the prices of things on the market, inflation rates, among other things. According to the NDC, there is currently nothing to smile about in Ghana, but the true state of the nation is really poor and dark. We shall continue to engage our members of parliament, civil society organizations, religious organizations, organized labor, and all stakeholders to fashion out a viable and sustainable alternative strategy to save Ghana's economy and democracy. Saving our economy also means saving our democracy. So we expect the president to drastically cut down the size of his government to signal a new beginning. We further expect the government to be tolerant to dissent he the calls for implementation of the Constitutional Review Committee recommendations, eschew profligacy, desist from nepotism and corruption, sanction corrupt officials, and be honest about the true state of the nation. My brothers and sisters, it is obvious that President Akufuado who continues to reveal in the largesse of high office does not appreciate the present day reality of the Ghanaian people. The president continues to live in his own world, far removed from yours and mine, that he fails or neglects to appreciate the true state of the nation. It is absolutely important to awaken President Kufuado and the ruling MPP to the uncomfortable but frank true state of Ghana today. A nation of many living in fear of where to find their next meal, leaving many parents to endure sleepless nights. The true state of our dear nation no longer lies in flowery speeches laced with political chicanery that never accept responsibility for anything, neither does it lie in the abstract theories that blame personal feelings on events that have no significant impact on our lives. The true state of the nation is when a ball of kinky, which used to sell between 50 pesos and one CD in December 2016, 
is now being sold of between four cities and five cities. The true state of Ghana is that a sack of maize, which we used to sell for 170 cities in 2016, is now being sold for 900 cities as at February 2023. Let's interrogate a few of the things we heard from the national chairman of the NDC now. Uh, the national communications officer of the party is Sami Jemfi, and he joins us on the telephone line right now. Mr. Jemfi, thank you for your time here on Top Story. Thanks for having me, Ivan. So, really, what was the point of this, what you call, true state of the nation? When your MPs in Parliament have spent almost two weeks thoroughly debating it? Well, debating... <laughs> the message on the on the state of the nation presented to parliament by president Ekufuado is one thing uh, but actually presenting a counter narrative that factually paints the right picture of where the current the country currently finds itself is another thing and that is the responsibility of the opposition. As you know, the NDC is the only viable and credible alternative to the government. And um, I believe the next government in waiting. And so when you have a president who goes to parliament to peddle falsehood about the state of our country with the aim of misleading the nation and the world at large, then it behooves the opposition to set the record straight, put things in the right perspective, and provide the people with the right information. Uh, that the time allotted members of parliament on the floor of the House to debate and address may not be adequate enough to deal with. And so that was the purpose. So that is the reason why we held this true state of the nation address. So you believe today. what the president presented uh, a couple of weeks back was in the true state of the nation. But we had, we had the president who admits we are in a crisis. No, the president, yes, admitted that we are in a crisis, but he was not truthful about the factors that have landed us in that crisis. He sought to totally blame the crisis we have on our hands on external factors such as COVID-19 and so on. And that, we all know, is completely false. And so we clearly had a responsibility to the nation to set the record straight because, even as you do know, way before COVID-19 struck, our economy showed serious signs of challenges. Before COVID-19, the Ghana city had depreciated by 13% to the dollar and over 15% to the euro. Our city was performing very poorly, such that the government set up a 40-member committee, which excluded the chairman of the economic management team, to investigate the reasons for the depreciation. Before COVID, our public debt had ballooned from $120 billion in 2016 to 225 billion Ghana cities as of March 2020. And our debt servicing amount had moved from 11 billion Ghana cities to 37 billion Ghana cities, constituting 91% of our tax revenue. So before COVID, our debt position was not in good shape. In fact, debt to GDP had worsened from 56% in 2016 to close to 70% if you added um, um, the ESLA and that there's another hidden debt and so on. So the claim that we were doing so well, we're on a very good economic trajectory before COVID um, hit our shores, is completely false. I mean, you say it's completely false, but the president isn't alone in making that accession. We are looking to the IMF to save this economy. The IMF's managing director 
Kristalina uh, Jujeva herself says, quote, we recognize that we are in a world in which exogenous shocks more often than, than before hit innocent bystanders. Ghana has been working towards good policies for quite some time, and the COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war hit and that significantly undermined Ghana. That is the IMF boss. Well, Evans, I recall a few months ago, you doing a story on this very show, top story, about what the country director of the World Bank, Mr. Pierre Laporte, had said about the state of Ghana's economy before COVID struck. I'm sure you remember that. Yes. When the World Bank country director said emphatically that our economy was facing many severe challenges before COVID struck. You see, you need to appreciate the difference in the posturing of the IMF when a member country has not applied to them for a bailout and when, vis-a-vis -vis when a member country applied to them for a bailout. Currently, we have applied to the IMF for a bailout. We are more or less a client, you see. So they cannot say anything that jeopardizes the debt restructuring and bailout we are seeking from them. And that is why they will be very diplomatic in their language, contrary to when we have not applied for an IMF bailout. What are the facts? The facts shows clearly that before COVID-19, government was spending recklessly, so much so that the budget deficit, which is a measure of how responsible every government is in its expenditure all across the world, had crossed the acceptable, had exceeded the acceptable threshold of 5%. In 2018, we recorded a budget deficit of 7.5%. And 7% in 2019, the government was already being reckless before COVID struck. In any case, we have had in excess of 30 billion Ghana cities as windfall revenue to manage this COVID pandemic. According to the Auditor General, only 12 billion cities of this amount was spent on COVID-19. So, even if we had 18 billion Ghana cities more than what we needed to manage the pandemic, then commonsensically, the pandemic cannot be blamed for where we are today because we have had more than enough to mitigate the debilitating impact of the pandemic and to support our economy. In any case, as our national chairman and leader said in his true state of the nation address today, Ghana is not an island. COVID, for God's sake, was a pandemic. It affected all the nations of our world, of the world, including our neighbors such as Togo, Benin, Côte d'Ivoire, and all that. None of our neighbors are experiencing the kind of crisis we are experiencing in Ghana. For example, none of them are implementing a domestic debt exchange as we are doing currently in Ghana. None of them are imposing cruel financial haircuts on their citizens, including pensioners. None of them have been downgraded to below junk status and have been locked out of the international capital market. None of them are doing an inflation rate of more than 50%. None of them. Okay, so why Ghana alone? The difference is that whereas these countries manage the resources they had from COVID judiciously to support their economies and their people, the Akufu Adobawumia MPP government was rather reckless in its expenses in 2020. And that is why we recorded an unprecedented budget deficit of 15.7% when our neighbors were doing budget deficits of less than 8%. This is the gospel truth, and we all know that. So, Evans, clearly... President Ekufuado doesn't want to accept responsibility for his own feelings. He does not appreciate the present reality of the Ghanaian people. And therefore, it was important for we, as the viable opposition in the country, to point out the deliberate falsehood he peddled and to provide accurate information to the people. Look, he claims that his government has spent a large chunk of its borrowed funds on roads. Today, as the national chairman explained, nothing could be further from the truth than that statement from the president because the fact shows that his government has had access to over 820 billion Ghana cities in the last six years. As total revenue, 820 billion. Yet they have spent a paltry 1.6% of this amount on roads. 
and a paltry 6% of this amount on infrastructure in general. Meaning that they failed to invest these huge resources, but rather wasted their mainly on consumption. So the problem we are going through is self-inflicted. It is the product of selfishness, recklessness, okay, and waste. That is where we are, where we are today. And until we speak this truth to our duty bearers and force them to accept their failings and force them to change direction, I am sorry that we are not likely to see any significant improvement. Yeah, I mean, so, so you, you've laid what you believe to be the true state of the nation. I mean, you are a government in waiting. What is the NDC's alternative once you believe you've diagnosed a real problem as we have it currently? Did you lay out any and what is it? Can you bullet it for me? The, 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 the first and most important alternative we have for the people of this country and for the consideration of this government has to do with the need for us to reset our priorities as a people. The waste, the, the, the needless expenditures on misplaced priorities events is just too much. How can we, in these difficult times, where we cannot even provide basic vaccines to protect our babies, be employing over 333 political appointees at the presidency. How can we be spending 350 million Ghana cities on a so-called national cathedral? And after spending over $58 million on that so-called cathedral, all we have to show for is the biggest pit in the whole world. How can we be wasting the taxpayers' money? In nine months alone last year, 59 million Ghana cities were spent on the so-called operational enhancement of the president. Another 15 million cities were spent on common car ties and batteries in only nine months. Another 4.8 million cities, that is some 48 billion old Ghana cities, were spent on just one cabinet retreat. For God's sake, you don't have to be an NDC member to know that we are on the path of destruction. Because if you fail to live within your means as a human being or as a, an institution, if you fail to cut your coat according to the size of your cloth and spend on the things that actually matter, you end up as a bankrupt person or as a bankrupt institution like Ghana has ended up as a bankrupt country. Um, you've asked your members of parliament, and you're, you're fundamentally talking about government reducing its size and reprioritizing. You've asked your members of parliament to save our democracy by staying in the House uh, and fighting for that. Um, what's the status of that? Because you've shocked some of the MPs who believe that, you know, the campaign period that you've asked them to suspend, others are on the ground and making it difficult for them to, to keep that directive and honor it. Um, is the party, the parliament is, from what I understand, is, is, is rising next week. Is the MPs still directed to stay? And how are you dealing with the concerns that some of them have raised? Yes. Um, as you may recall, the directive for all our MPs to avail themselves for all parliamentary sittings um, is supposed to last until the end of this month. And so the directive is still in force. It has not yet come to our attention that other non-MP aspirants are breaching the directive we have given. If anybody... Uh, brings that to our attention and seem is supported with evidence. As we indicated in that directive, we will ensure that appropriate sanctions apply to all such persons because our MPs are the only hope we in the NDC and Ghanaians at large have now. They need to be present in the House to hold the feet of this government to the fire of accountability. And we do not think that our internal um, primaries should disrupt the, uh, our, our gallant members of parliament for this very important national exercise. We salute them and want to encourage them um, to continue the sacrifices they are making, not just for the NDC, but for the entire nation. Uh, Sami Jinfi, thank you very much. And Sami Jinfi is a national communications officer uh, of uh, the NDC. Well, the MPP says they will not respond to this for now because they are also preparing a, a formal response of theirs. And I pretty much believe you 
who live the actual state of the nation have a view on this. You've heard the government state of the nation address the their version of it. Now you're hearing the NDC's version of it. What is your version of your own reality? Uh, send me a WhatsApp, 055 News night starts right now.